Welcome to Kingsbridge HealthStyle, the health and wellbeing podcast from the Kingsbridge Healthcare Group. My name is Avril Keyes and I'm hosting this series of podcasts putting real patient questions to the medical team at the hospital. From diagnosis through to treatment, we will be giving you the lowdown on what to watch out for and when you should make an appointment. And if you have a question for a future podcast, you can email us on the email address below in the information. Today's uh, podcast guest is Dr. Siobhan Kirk. Welcome, uh, Siobhan. Thank you, Avril. Uh, Siobhan is one of only two doctors in Northern Ireland recognised as a menopause specialist by the British Menopause Society. Uh, she's just recently developed the Maypole Menopause Clinic in partnership with Kingsbridge uh, Private Hospital. The clinic is the first exclusive private menopause clinic in Northern Ireland. A fellow of both the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, uh, she's presented research at national and international conferences, is regularly invited to speak at local women health, women's health meetings and teaches menopause care to GPs and gynees in Northern Ireland. Now, as you expect, you'll expect, Siobhan, I've had lots of questions from Instagram. Um, despite this not being a new topic in any way, um, there's a real gap in information about the menopause. So I suppose starting right at the beginning, um, tell me what is the menopause and how would I know that I had started my menopause? Okay, the menopause itself is the last period and it's defined after a year of no periods. So you don't okay. know that you're going through the menopause until it's happened and you can look back a year down the line. But before that, there's the perimenopause, which um, can last for months or even years before the last period. And that's whenever some symptoms can start and periods may or may not start to become irregular or change yes and so perimenopause is maybe a more recent term that i have heard um lots of questions came in to me about perimenopause um and how might you know that you're at that stage and, and are there treatment well, options the available? average age of the menopause so for periods to stop would be 51 in the uk but okay. usually once women get into their 40s a lot of them would start to develop some symptoms that that could be attributed to perimenopause okay. what is happening is that the hormone levels um, are dropping particularly the hormone estrogen and that has all sorts of effects on the body periods can still be regular so quite often um you know the penny doesn't drop that it is mm -hmm. related to perimenopause um, not just for the woman but sometimes for their gps don't even think about perimenopause as being a, an explanation for some symptoms yes and is it seen by gps as something that would be treated or some no. some gps would some gps would focus on blood tests mm -hmm. um it's not really recommended that blood tests are required for a diagnosis of menopause particularly from the mid 40s onwards you go more by symptoms okay and that's recommended by the nice guidelines on management of menopause in 2015 okay. quite often in the perimenopause blood test can be normal so if a woman does get a blood test and it's normal then sometimes a gp says no your symptoms aren't related to the menopause um, and they're left without suitable treatment okay and what kinds of symptoms then uh, you know both from a menopause and perimenopause what kinds of things yeah well the, the typical symptoms that most people associate with menopause and perimenopause would be the flushes and sweats what we call mm -hmm. vasomotor symptoms but a lot of women don't get those sometimes it can be anxiety and yeah. a recent study has shown that anxiety is actually the most common reason why women consult their GPs in the perimenopause poor sleep insomnia lying awake in the middle of the night waking mm -hmm. up um, and that can have a terrible effect then knock on effect vicious cycle really the next day yeah. they're tired they're irritable um, vaginal dryness tends to be a, a later symptom but some women do start to get that in their 40s um, loss of sex drive just general tiredness, joint pains. There's about 40 different symptoms wow. have been attributed to the menopause <laughs> and every woman has, has a different experience. Not every woman has symptoms. Um, the other thing would be um, effect on periods. Sometimes periods may still be regular, but can get heavier. Okay. Um, really what we call menstrual chaos. Periods can get heavier, <laughs> right. lighter, more frequent, less frequent, anything so goes. So it's very hard really. to diagnose in lots of ways because say you're in your 40s and maybe your periods are relatively unchanged and you're, yeah. you're, you're, uh, you're not having hot flushes, but you're terribly anxious. So yeah. is anxiety at that age always attributable to menopause? Obviously anxiety is a very 
common symptom mm. and anxiety in everybody has increased really over the past year with COVID, but particularly if it's coming up to the period. So we tend to see a worsening of symptoms, maybe premenstrually. Okay. So increased premenstrual symptoms can be a sign that it's hor- hormonal. Yeah, horm- hormones are to, to blame yeah. for that I, th- I think that's interesting and I think as women we maybe don't focus on those symptoms we do look for the very traditional symptoms yeah. we maybe also uh, think oh well it's when we're in our 50s yeah. and so um, maybe it's a good idea to be maybe a more aware and yeah. um, possibly track the kind of things we're feeling as, as we go through a typical month Yes, yes, definitely. You know, and quite often women are are busy, they're coping, maybe looking after elderly parents, they're dealing with teenagers. So they they (laughs) put they put their lack of sleep and their anxiety and irritability down down to life stresses as well. Yes. And so uh, we've, we've we've talked about age, typical age of onset. Is that a hereditary thing? Can you go by how your mother's menopause maybe went? Not necessarily. About one in a hundred women will have an early menopause under the okay. age of 40, and that can be hereditary. Okay, okay, but not generally in, in terms not of... Not generally, the, yeah. no. Okay, and so uh, we've talked about symptoms, and I guess it makes sense to move on to treatment, and the treatment we would all be most familiar with is hormone replacement treatment, or HRT. Um it would be great if you could tell me exactly what that is, what it looks like, because I believe it's not the same thing for everyone. It's not a single tablet that's dished out to everyone. No, it it, it can be tailor, tailor-made tailor to suit to each individual woman. Not every woman has menopausal symptoms and not any not every woman needs treatment. About okay, 75% of okay. women have symptoms and only about 25% of them will actually seek help for, for it. Hormone replacement is the most effective treatment option um Mm -hmm. some gps prescribe antidepressants um but that isn't recommended by the by the nice guidelines on management of menopause there's other benefits of hrt other than relief of menopausal symptoms that can protect your heart against heart disease if started within a few years of the menopause it reduces your risk of osteoporosis and may reduce your risk of dementia um so there are other other benefits other than symptom relief yes and how would it how would it typically be dispensed are there different methods of taking well, HRT? If, there's different types you can have it orally or transdermally where it's absorbed through the skin by a okay. patch mm-hmm. or gel depends on whether you're still having periods or not whenever you start it if you're still perimenopausal when you start hrt then you go on one that gives you a regular bleed okay every month still if women start it at least a year after their last period when they're postmenopausal, then they go on one that has both hormones, estrogen and progesterone on a continuous basis and okay. they get no bleeding eventually on that. Okay. And uh, you've talked about going on to HRT when you're perimenopause and that was one of the questions that came in is, is can you almost preempt your menopausal symptoms and start taking it at an earlier stage? If you're having symptoms, you're yeah, there's, there's no reason to start it if you're feeling fine and you're not having any symptoms. But yeah. if you're having symptoms in the perimenopause, then yes, that's that's the time yeah. to start it. And that brings me on then to all the questions that come in about the risks of HRT. And I think it would be fair to address them here. You know, what, yeah. you know, what are the risks and is it safe to stay on for a prolonged period of time? The, the risks with the HRT were sort of blown out of proportion. There was a big um, scare in 2002, which has um, largely been retracted, but the, the news hasn't really got out to the, mm-hmm. you know, to the general public, and even some GPs are still quite anxious about prescribing HRT, but yeah. for the majority of women, the benefits outweigh the risks. Below the age of 50, there's no significant increased risk of breast cancer. So women who have an early menopause should take HRT um, at least up to the average age of the menopause, which is early 50s. Okay. And in some of my clinics, I would see women who are in their teens, 20s, 30s. So it's very important that they have HRT for heart and bone protection. Okay. Um, over the age of 50, there is a very slight increased risk of breast cancer with continued use of HRT. The risk is less than being overweight or less than having two glasses of wine, two small glasses of wine a night. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that just puts, puts, it, in it, in, puts it into perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there's all the other benefits that, that I of mentioned course. earlier. So for the majority of women, the benefits outweigh 
the risks. The risks. Are there side effects to it? Side, side effects, um, quite often, well, if you start when you're perimenopausal, you take the other hormone progesterone for half of the time, for so two weeks out of the four four week mm-hmm. packet if it's a pill. Um, and some women do experience side effects with the progestogen part of it. Okay. Estrogen is a hormone that does all the good things and makes you feel better. And progestogen is only needed in HRT to protect the lining of the womb. Okay. Um, so if they have side effects with the first type of HRT they try, then they can try try a different one. Okay. Or try transdermal. Um, transdermal estrogen in the form of patch gel or spray isn't associated with any increased risk of blood clots in the legs or lungs or stroke so for some women this would be the the only option um or the safest option for them and so i presume to you know um health issues in the family and you know maybe past uh, issues that the, the woman may have, would have had would play a part in deciding how yes a detailed the history needs yeah. to be taken to look for any risk factors or, or reasons why women can't take HRT but yes. there's very few women that can't take HRT in some form okay and so cause there were some questions around um, both blood pressure and bone density so you've already said that it actually promotes good bone it density. Bone density yeah. yeah what about blood pressure if anyone has a history of high it blood pressure it has no effect on blood pressure there's a very old type of estrogen that is rarely used now um mm-hmm. conjugated equine estrogen that came from pregnant mare's urine and it can actually cause hypertension but it would be very rarely used now okay um so a lot of gps do insist on annual blood pressure checks which is good practice but it's it's not if their blood pressure is up it's not the HRT yeah. that's causing it they and need it, their blood pressure probably treated. shows the questions that come in probably does show you um that, that those kind of older new stories have maybe hung around a bit with people and yeah uh, and they do have yeah. those worries obviously anybody with maybe multiple risk factors for stroke mm-hmm. like high blood pressure or previous stroke or heart attack then transdermal again would be the safest option for those women okay um I was asked about contraception when you're on it is, is that HRT need? isn't contraceptive and you mm-hmm. still need contraception for two years after your last period. Okay. What can be very useful for women who are perimenopausal needing HRT and contraception is the marina coil. Yes. Because it sits inside your womb and provides the hormone progesterone that you need for up to five years is a very effective contraceptive. And then you can just add in your estrogen in tablet patch or gel or spray okay. form oh, and you end up with no bleeding so it's also very good for women who are having bleeding problems yes in the perimenopause and um should you hold off taking HRT until you absolutely need it you know sh- should women out there be suffering on with maybe mild to moderate symptoms it's an individual decision really after being given the right information everybody's mm-hmm different you know what some women will put up with is completely different to what other women you know yeah. some women can't cope with three flushes a day and other women are you know coping with you know severe night sweats up changing the bed three or four times a night yeah. um obviously the benefits with heart and bone the hidden benefits are there if you start it sooner unfortunately i sometimes see women in their 60s who've held off um, yeah. and suffered all the way through their 50s thinking these symptoms are going to settle and they haven't yes. and then they decide they can't cope anymore and want to start treatment but they've missed the boat and you can for can heart you not? and bone protection oh, okay. they will still get some benefit maybe from the bone point of view but you know they've suffered unnecessarily really for for all those years yeah so do the do the the groundwork look into it and and yeah. make an informed yeah. decision for some women the symptoms if they're not too severe will settle with time so mm-hmm. some for some women it may be appropriate to hold off and yeah. wait but there's no point suffering too long and i suppose on that are there women uh, and i am sort of hoping i'm in this group but are there women who actually kind of breeze through it and don't Yes, there symptoms? are. You know, I work in contraception as well. And sometimes if I'm changing coils for, for women in their late 40s, I say, you haven't any menopausal symptoms? And they mm-hmm. say, no. And it's nice for me to actually meet women who don't have <laughs> yes. symptoms because obviously in my in my menopause clinic, I'm, I'm seeing the, the, the woman here. Yeah, well, you're only going suffering. to see. Yes. Yeah. So I suppose yeah. it's maybe uh, to, to shout out there for all the women who yeah. managed to get through it without too much uh, drama yeah. or need for drugs yeah. um what about uh, when do you stop it yes when do you stop taking there's it? no arbitrary time limit for hrt use um i'm sure my mum won't mind me saying that she's still on it at 76 okay um 
because there's no magic age at which all the symptoms go away. Mm-hmm. Short-term use of HRT is probably about three to five years, and some women may successfully be able to come off it after that. Other women, if they stop it or reduce the dose and the symptoms are bad, then yeah. they can carry on. So you can kind of test um, the waters and see if, if yeah, you, yeah. you have it. Yeah, after a few years, it's yeah. probably worth reassessing. Um, over the age of 60, transdermal treatment would be the safest option um, okay. if they're continuing. We also haven't mentioned the woman who had a hysterectomy. Um, it's a different, it's estrogen only. They don't need the progesterone hormone. Okay. And the risk of breast cancer appears to be related to the progesterone. And in fact, some studies have shown women who've had a hysterectomy and take HRT have a lower risk of breast cancer than okay. women who aren't on estrogen replacement. So for those women who've had a hysterectomy, um, they can safely use estrogen only long term. That's good to without know. Without any increased risk of breast yeah. cancer. And, what, and does that matter at what, what age they had that hysterectomy? No, no, no. it doesn't matter what so, age they had it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a number of questions about testosterone. Uh, is it something that's prescribed yes, here? T- kind of testosterone is a hormone that's more commonly associated with men, but mm-hmm. women produce testosterone as well from, from their ovaries. Um, and particularly in women who have had a surgical menopause, who've had their ovaries removed, can mm-hmm. benefit from testosterone replacement. It wouldn't be used on its own. It's added in on top of estrogen replacement. So mm-hmm. it's recommended they would optimise their estrogen replacement first of all. Okay. Unfortunately, there is no licensed form of testosterone for women in the UK at present. There is a cream licensed in Australia, which hopefully will become available in the UK in the next few years. So we need to use um, test, testosterone gel that's licensed for men, but we use a much smaller much okay. smaller dose. Okay. Because um, I've heard the terms female and male testosterone, so is that what you mean? Yeah, well, th- there, there is a, a private, privately you can get testosterone cream, but to be honest with you, I've never actually prescribed it because mm-hmm. most women are happy to use the off-license yeah. um, NHS preparation. Where testosterone can be useful is for maybe mood, energy, and sometimes loss of libido, although it's not a magic answer. Yeah. But it wouldn't be given on its own, it would be very much as part of a... It's on top of estrogen replacement, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I suppose... I've had questions from people who maybe don't want to or um, or can't for whatever reason take HRT. Are there other treatments out there that actually would work? There's all sorts of um, alternatives available in Holland and Barrett or, or pharmacies. Um, there's no clear medical evidence for mm-hmm. any of them, but on an individual basis, some women may find them of benefit. There is quite a high placebo effect um, with HRT. If anybody is going down the herbal route, it's recommended that they buy preparations that have a THR, it's traditional herbal remedy um, quality mark on them because some some of them aren't aren't regulated. There is also some concern that long-term use of herbal preparations may be associated with liver or kidney damage and again they're not recommended in women with a history of breast cancer and they can interact with other prescribed medications so they're not necessarily safer interesting and in terms of other um, it's not really treatments but you know are there lifestyle changes that we could all consider that may make the menopause easier or yes there's lots of things women can do um lose weight if you're overweight um Mm -hmm. that's going to make you more likely to um have flushes and sweats um exercise can help with the psychological symptoms Mm -hmm. Um, meditation there's not a lot more evidence now around cognitive behavioral therapy yeah can be useful um, anything stop diet smoking yeah. <laughs> reduce alcohol yes less yeah. tea coffee okay all, all sounds those like fun things. <laughs> yeah there are some prescribable um, as I said earlier GPs quite often prescribe antidepressants which aren't recommended first line but for women who who don't want HRT or can't take HRT, mm-hmm. then sometimes antidepressants can help to a certain extent with okay. the mood, anxiety, and sometimes a bit with the flushes and sweats. Yes. Um, I have actually had um, a couple of followers contact me about you who, uh, with, with really glowing recommendations because they've attended your clinic in the Maypole. 
Um, and I wondered if you could tell me what happens at the clinic. Um, certainly both of these women who contacted me said it was the best investment they had made in their health care. Um, so tell me what happens okay. when you go to see you at the Maypole. That, that's great to hear, Avril. Thank you for the feedback. Yes, I offer relaxed 30 minutes consultations in the clinic in Hollywood. Um, they first of all see a nurse and get height, weight and blood pressure checked. Mm -hmm. And then they come in to see me and I ask them how I can help them. And mm -hmm. usually they come out with a, a list list of different issues that they've had. The majority of women I would see there aren't already on HRT and maybe just haven't been getting the right advice or getting anywhere from their GP. Okay. Um, some women are having problems or ineffective symptom relief yes. on, the, on the treatment they're already on. Um, so I take a detailed medical history and then come up with a treatment plan okay. for them. Okay. So obviously people don't need to come to you first because there is a, a sort of a, a first step in the pathway f for getting support and that would be your GP. Yes. So what, what would you recommend people would do uh, before they approach their GP and, and how should they approach their GP? I, I think it would be useful for a woman to inform themselves about the, the different symptoms and the different treatment options yeah. and if they have decided they are keen to try HRT then contact their their GP and you've given us some really good links that we will put in the information part of the yes yeah, so there's a lot of very useful websites out there mm -hmm. um, to help help women come to an informed decision yeah. um, so you can go with more confidence to your GP and actually yeah, say I've been yeah. looking into this I think I'm perimenopausal and I would like to try patches or or tablets yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think that that's a kind of common theme in, in across a number of the podcasts that we've done, that sometimes it is about having the confidence to, to say to your doctor, this is what I want. And, yeah. and I know you would advocate that rather than going directly to you. Um, you know, and when, I suppose at what point would someone say, no, I really... I really want to go to someone like Siobhan. Well, mo most women don't need to go anywhere near a menopause specialist, mm -hmm. but there are some women who just want, um, you know, a GP appointment's 10 minutes. Some of them want a bit more personalised information about the pros and cons yes. um, to come up with the best HRT and, for and them. And can people come directly to Kingsbridge to book an appointment with you or do they need to get a referral in no, any way? No, there's self-referral. There's no okay. GP referral needed. Okay, that's great. Um, I don't usually review people. I have quite a long waiting list, so I try to keep the appointments for for new for new women to be helped. Yes. So I tend to write back to the GP with a list of different treatment options that women can then go away and work through with okay. their GP. And uh, in your experience, are GPs generally very open and supportive of? Yes, of I have. I haven't had any yeah. any problems. Not none of my patients have any have had any problems getting the HRT then from their GP. That's, that's great. I mean, I think. From, from my point of view, it's it's feeling so much more informed about what the menopause is, feeling a lot less afraid of HRT. Yeah. And I think you've really done a great job in, in, in explaining I, that today. I think today. for a lot of women, they think they're losing their mind because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're anxious, they're not sleeping, they've brain fog, loss of concentration, you know. Yeah. So sometimes actually just getting the information and knowing that it's normal yeah. and that you're not going crazy yeah. can help. And I suppose associating it with menopause as well, and not just yes. and you know, knowing knowing what the reason for it is. Yeah, and un yeah, and understanding, and also I suppose uh, understanding that you're not the only person going through this. Yes. So that, yeah. that's uh, that's Definitely. key there. Yeah, Siobhan, you have informed and and you've also reassured me hugely, and uh, I, I really appreciate you giving us us your time today and I hope that you all enjoyed the, the, the session and that it answered many of the questions that you had for me and um, thank you so much for listening and um, you can listen to all of the uh, Kingsbridge podcasts on any of the podcast uh, apps that are available you can also follow us on social we're across all of the different social platforms and we look forward to seeing you at our next podcast